Hi, I'm Esben and uh, welcome to this short video introduction to the ArcGIS desktop. The topics I would like to cover in this video are, first of all, I would like to talk about what is the ArcGIS software family. I will be talking about the anatomy of ArcMap. I'm talking about especially distinction between data and environment. I will be talking about how to get data into the ArcGIS family. I'll talk about the user interface of ArcMap. And then I'll talk about different levels of environment or different levels of containers for environment in ArcMap. First of all, ESRI is an abbreviation of Environmental System Research Institute, but no one uses that. ESRI in everyday life, but basically ESRI is one of the largest producers of spatially enabled applications they produce for web servers, for web applications, mobile phones, desktops, tablets, GPSs, and probably more. Um, ArcGIS is their main desktop package and consists of a series of applications amongst which the three most important ones are ArcMap, ArcScene and ArcGlobe. ArcMap is the 2D work space where you normally do most of your work and at least in this course we'll be doing by far the most of our work in the ArcMap application. ArcScene and ArcGlobe both can do 3D visualizations. Um, ArcScene does it in memory and a bit quicker, while ArcGlobe can handle very large visualizations and very much just like um, Google Earth really. Um, today all of these applications are being recoded and repackaged into what is called ArcGIS Pro. ArcGIS Pro, for different reasons, I don't think it's uh, ready for um, for our type of course yet. So um, we'll leave it for now. But maybe in some years, many of these functionalities will be to find inside ArcGIS Pro. Um, inside these free applications, there are two special Helpers of you want to sub applications. Um, there's our catalog, which is the data management tool, so where you can arrange your data and move it around to whatever. And our toolboxes, which is the interface for the analytical aspects of ArcGIS. Um, our catalog is a bit special in that it um, also is available. As it's as a standalone application. The first and probably most important thing to remember when you start using ArcMap is that there is a strict distinction between data and environment. Um, and it's so data is the geodata, the environment is different ways of analyzing it and visualizing it. Uh, it's my experience that uh, it is a good idea to distinguish between three types of data. Input data, basic raw input data that you will never change. Intermediate data values, results of your calculations, your work. And then the final result, your output data that you can keep as a, as a whatever or send to customers or which situation you now are in. Um, I think it's practical to have this distinction because um, in science we like to be able to have our work be reproducible so that people can go and say, okay, given this input data, given these operations, this was the result. So we have that thing about being able to go back to the original data. The environment. Basically, there's two aspects to the environment. There is a visualization environment, which contains symbologies and projections, and then there is a analytical environment, or the geoprocessing environment, as they call it in ArcMap. The analytical environment 
consist of, um, of as I said, visualizations, how the data is visualized. In this slide here we have two different visualizations of the same data. In the top I have a Mercator projection and in the bottom I have a model wider and in the top I have symbolized the countries according to their population density. So the most dense areas are red and the least dense are green. In the bottom one I just flip the colors so now the least dense are red and the most dense are green. But anyway it's the same data but seen in two different environments. So that's basically the thing about environment and data. We have that distinct thing there's only one data set here and it's shown in two different environments. One of the things that confuses people when they start with ArcMap is that even though they have data on their hard disk, ArcMap can't see it. And that's because ArcMap only accesses data through connections. So before you can start doing anything you have to establish some connections. I will be showing how to establish three types of connections, folder connections, database connections and connections to a VMS server. This can be done inside our map, but um, I will use the opportunity to demonstrate how it can be done in uh, our catalog where it's also a bit easier to see what, how it's done. Um, so first of all, I'll launch our catalog. We'll need this address in a moment. So here we are in our catalog and you can see I have no connections established. So what we will do is that we will start establishing our different connections. We can start out with folder connections and you can right click on it and say connect to folder and we can now start browsing my computer so the operational system level and in my case I have some data on my D drive that's about normal store things like this and I have a data folder and in the data folder I have a GIS folder I'll now so I'll clear that and say okay so now I have a folder connection to this folder on my D drive and this is the contents of it. I'll do the same for a connection to the file server or GeoData file server at campus. So I'll say connection. This time it's not something on my local co computer so I'll have to type in the address so this is the address of my uh, file server at the campus where we have all our spatial data, geodata so so okay and it has now established a connection to it so and here we have the different folders that we have on our file server the second type of connections I want to show you is a database connection so again here we go in and say add database connection these are the connections, it's a Postgres database, this is the address of it, this is the default username and has a password that you can have in one of the live lectures and we say OK and it has now connected to our database server. Finally I want to show how we connect to a VMS, it's down under GIS services and a VMS and this is where this little thing comes in handy. So I just copy it like that. And I can then paste the address in. I can't remember this address. It's the address to the get capabilities of the VMS server. And once you have this address and it's on the website of the course, you can connect and it has now connected to the VMS. The VMS is a type of server that serves images of data so we typically use it for background data so aerial photographs also photos if you wish um, historic scanned historical maps that type of data is what we've got there but also quite a lot of um, elevations and hill shades 
things that you use for visual effects. So now I have connected to my three data sources. So I have folder connections, I have a database connection, and I have a VMS connection. So I'm now ready to start using our map. So I'll just close down our catalog and switch to uh, our map. Once our map has started, it will present with the startup dialog box where we have the ability to open different recently opened maps so we can go back and work on a earlier project or we can go down and say a new one and we can base it on a template or just make as in case a black map. Note that every new map document, and this is what we are doing, we are creating a new map document, talk about it more in a moment, has a default geodatabase. That is where it by default stores data or looks for data. It defaults down to the ArcGIS folder of your document folder. That means that all of your maps, if you don't do anything, they will all have the same default database. And it has a tendency to become a wee bit cluttered. So for real life projects, I try to remember to create my project with a its own geodatabase, default geodatabase. You can change it after you have started the project, but it's a good idea to think about, okay, where do I want to have my data? Which data structure do I want to use in this project? But we'll talk about that again later. So we are ready, we have chosen a black map, and we say, okay, we are good to go. So back in my PowerPoints, this was our start. We can open existing maps. We can create a new black one on some templates, or some official templates. So if we are in um, you know, an organization, we can have some. All your maps will look the same. If you want having a doing a project, we're going to use several maps. It might be a good idea to have some templates so all your maps look the same. So that was the start one. Once we're in here, we can start doing the next thing. We can add data. Um, and we might as well start up by saying it hard map everything can be done in several ways um, it's practical that you got the hang of the program because then you just choose that way that is good in that workflow that you're all using but as a newcomer to the software it can get a bit annoying that oh you do that this way and that way and what is the difference or are there any differences so, for instance, add data, we can use the little plus, we can say plus, add, and it will go out, and we will see here in a moment, it will show me my different locations, so I've got my different folder locations, and I can go down and choose my database or my BMS services. But I'll just go down to my database services, so my folder connections, and I'll go down in the folder I created for this purpose, so I have a ArcMap intro and I have a series of data. I can choose all of them, I can choose holding down the control key, I can do one or another, or I can hold down the shift and do a continuous select, standard window select functions. So we'll just add all of them. So now we have um, Denmark, we have um, some data, primarily we have also got some data for Sweden um, and we can um, start handling the whole data. The other alternative to opening data was to go up and say from the file menu and go and say add data and add data you see got the same symbol and that will do exactly the same. A um, common problem for newcomers to ArcMap is that you do not add data by saying open. Open and save relate to the document, the project you're working in, the environment. So here you can say, okay, if I want to save my settings, how I'm doing, you do press save. And yes, it is a good idea to do it. And no, there's no auto save. So best practice, whenever you made important changes, 
save your data because things can go wrong. Um, and if you want to return to a, an old project or an earlier version of the same project, you use open and then you find the file there. So open and save are not for data, they are for document. So the environment add data is for adding data. And this one is your standard data. You can do all the types of data uh, back in bound images and things like that. We'll look at that later. So again, just to repeat myself in PowerPoint, you can add data, you can click on the little plus, or you can choose add data from the file menu. This will open, both cases will open a browser and you can browse to wherever your data is. If you haven't created the connections as I did before in our catalog, it has that little plus folder with a plus sign where you can go and say add a folder connection and you can then create your connections. But it's only for the connections you do in that way. So, now that we have our map, we have some data loaded, we can start talking about the toolbars. There are two main toolbars in our map. There's the main toolbar and there's the tools toolbar. Um, main toolbar has things like open map, save map, um, cut, paste, delete, sometimes work, uh, undo, redo, mm, typically only work on changes to the environment. Add data, an indication of the scale, not only does it show what scale you're working at, but you can also use a drop down and it will then give you the ability to choose fixed scales. Edit data, and then there are some buttons for different windows, we will be talking about them when we cover windows in the moment. There is help. Um, ArcMap has probably one of the best help programs around. So go in and check uh, on the help. That's really where you see why the software costs money because it is really good, well documented. Um, the other toolbar that's important is the tools toolbar, and it has mainly tools to. Um, manipulate with our data, see, zoom around, do things like that. We have the plus, the little magnifying glass, we zoom in, zoom out, um, and so on. Um, there is one thing you should know, we have the black selection arrow, this one here, black selection arrow, which selects graphical elements, and we have a blue one which can select data. Again, there we have this distinction between our things in the environment, where we have graphics, so north arrows, scale bars, things like that, and we have our data. They have two different selection tools. Be aware of that. So how does this function over an arc map? So we jump back and we can see, okay, here we have the of Denmark, and I can then use my little plus, and I can zoom in on uh, on Copenhagen region, I can uh, move a bit around. Um, I can um, go back to a previous extent. There's one thing that you should be aware. It always happens in our map, is that if you are in the zoom thing and you by accident do like this, so I drag a very small square, and then it zooms into that and it seems like all my, your data is gone. It always happens. Um, then, of course, you can go back to the previous, or you can use the tool, which is this one, which is zoom to full extent. So that will show you where zoom out to all of the data. So there's data you can't understand why you can't see. Try and press this one, and it will zoom up, out so that all data is displayed. So that's the basics of the of this tool uh, bars here. There are many, many toolbars. You have access to them on the customized toolbars, and you can, sorry, here toolbars, and then you can choose if you're going to work with GPX and GPSs, and then you can choose toolbar for there, or for editing, for drawing, putting small graphics in. There are toolbars. These toolbars are mainly created for specific workflows. So 
outside that workflow they probably won't make sense and you'll probably have to get rid of them. They don't want to clutter up your workspace too much. So add toolbars from the customized toolbars and this is said that's one of the wee bit annoying things with our map when you were working in a lab as you will be in this course that if someone else has been using our map at the same computer you're sitting in and they had added some toolbars for whatever workflow they were in and you can come and sit later at the same computer you'll get their settings so you'll get their toolbars and you'll also see in a moment we start talking about windows that you'll get the old windows so briefly back to our powerpoint we have toolbars and you can use the customized toolbar to choose which ones you have and remember that the main ones that you want to work with are the main toolbar and the tools toolbar another thing that is a wee bit surprising or a learning curve for newcomers to ArcMap is the concept of the windows um, inside the application we have windows this is a window our table of contents this window is at the moment is what's called docked so it's parked alongside or docked alongside the edge of the application I can grab up in the top of it and I can move it away so now it's a floating window and I can dock it along any of the sides you can see these more diamonds if I dock it down here it will dock it at the bottom of it over here at the bottom of this side and this one normally belongs over here so let's leave it here windows can also have be pinned or collapsible at the moment this one is pinned because it has this little icon here a little pin showing that its pin is down meaning it's holding the window open if I click the pin so flip it so its pin is up the window is now collapsible and as soon as I'm outside the window area I can use it if I go in and click on it as long as my mouse stays in here it stays open when I move my mouse out it will collapse so as soon as I start doing something it uh, disappears so collapsible windows pinned windows you can close the window completely and um, this one is a bit oof, not so nice to lose but no sweat you can up here you have shortcuts that can open the main window so this was the table of contents window click here we get it back the other windows that we'll be using is the catalog our catalog now we have our catalog as I opened before it's a standalone application now as a floating window um, personally I prefer our catalog to be uh, together with my uh, table of contents and I normally see, use this center point here so I'll drag it there and it will create what is called a tab window so now I have our catalog down here so I can switch between our catalog and my table of contents but that's just my way of working I like it like this um, the other window that's important is the our tool so toolboxes we open that and that gives us all the tools available normally we would like it to be collapsed over here so we got there it, this one is a way of searching if you just know have to know where the different tools are you can browse down through the system sometimes that can be difficult to remember and there is a very nice little tool a search tool that you can use so if you can remember a word from the help so if you know it's something about creating a buffer or something like it you can type buffer in the search tool and it will give you which tools have the word buffer in their name or in the help text so I'll just open the search tool also and just like with uh, my um, toolbar, I'll just, um, toolbox, I'll just deep in it so now they're here um, if, when we're doing lots of work with tools it might be a good idea to pin the tools and then you have down here again tabbed search and toolboxes so this will be a appropriate 
um, environment for working and if you're not doing so much so many analysis at the moment you can uh, unpin your toolbar and then that can be hidden over there so going back to um, PowerPoints we have windows they can be docked that is they parked alongside they can be tabbed they can be pinned they could so that they stay open or they could be collapsible so they will collapse whenever you um, move your mouse outside the window the main tool for a window view we're working with is the table of contents um, it is our main interface to working with our data so let's have a wee bit look at that so I'll take my content here. Here we have our data. Um, our map, this table of contents can be in different uh, states. At the moment it's in this state that's called drawing order. This indicates that the data is drawn first, this data, then this data, then this data, then this data. So this is the basic landmass. If I move this one upwards, like that, then they would first draw all the forests, then they will town, then the motor road, and then they will draw the land mass on top of it, which won't be very useful. I can then start rearranging them so now I have motor roads on top. And if I then want to have my town areas also, I can bring them up. So we can rearrange data. We can also hide data by ticking them off. Now displayed or not displayed. Um, the table of contents has a tendency to change to this mode, which is displayed by source, good because you can see where your data is. Um, but if there is data that has no sp spatial data included in it, it will the table of contents will automatically change to this so uh, mode so you can see them. And in this mode, you can't drag data upload down, so you will have to make sure that if you want to do that you are in the drawing order mode of the table of contents. So two modes of the table of contents, drawing order or list by source. Those are the most two common. There are two more, um, but they are a bit more advanced use. So we will leave them for the now. Um, we also saw that we could use the table of contents to display our data, which data is displayed. The ones with tick marks are displayed, and it draws from the bottom up. So if something is underneath something with a tick mark and it's covered by it, it will not display. Finally, oh, the next thing to talk about, there's more, is that there's two main ways of seeing our data. We can see them as we do now in what is called the data view, I'll just zoom in on this coming again. So we have our data view here, and then we have what's called a layout view. Uh, in the layout view, we can uh, see our final output format, and th there's two possibilities. You can click down here, between the two, or you can go up under window and change between the two up here. This is again a typical situation of a new installation. There's no default printer set up and therefore does not really know how big is my output going to be. There's some something of our hanging around down there. Um, but what is the output? So first of all we'll need to tell our map what printer we're using and what type of size of output we want. So I'll just to start out with I'll use my Adobe PDF and set it to a floor and say that my output is also going to be a four paper. Um, if you want to uh, create a layout to go in a project, you can change the size to 10 by 10 centimeters or whatever you want in here. So now we've got that. We have a frame that we can put our data in. And here we have our data. I can just drag it up so it becomes a bit bigger and fills in my area like this. So the outer frame is my output data and this is 
my data. Once we have created our layout for a window, we uh, are ready to insert some of those things some are specific for the layout. Generally we call them marginalia because they are in the margin of the map, but they are things like title, legend, scale bars, north arrows, tables, graphs, etc. All of these things and how to place them efficiently we'll cover in the video on, the, on map design. But for now we just know that we can do insert them and we can insert them from the insert menu over in our map. We should know that we go into the insert menu and then we can insert for instance an off arrow we just choose a few R and say insert and we can you now place it, you know that we are using the black placing arrow, arrow and now we can drag it around and place it somewhere. Um, while you are in the layout you can do all the things that you can do uh, in your standard data view so we can zoom in, we can do whatever we, we normally do. As a matter of fact you can, I think you can do everything you can do in ArcMap in the layout uh, view, but personally I don't feel it's uh, right to do it. But um, some I have seen some students do it, so um, that's uh, the layout. It's also common to have the experience that um, that you want to insert a uh, north arrow and you can't. It's grayed out, and that's simply because I have now changed to the data view where we can't insert those things. It's only in the layout view that we can insert these elements. So, we've now covered the basics of the interface and let's drill a bit about these environments. Basically there are some system environments, some, there are some user environments, map environments, Docu map document environments, data frames and layers. If you look at the top two levels, their system environments, they're basically only for the administrator. You shouldn't normally fool around with. You can pathways to default template styling, some advanced hardware settings, all of those can be set using a application called advanced arc map settings. Um, so if you have in running on a specialized piece of hardware you can maybe optimize the way it uses it there. The global user settings they are global because they are global in the sense that they will never mind which map document you are in they will follow you. So they are unique for each user machine combination. The most important one is these data connections where do we look for data um, so typically you, if you move from the lab computer to your home computer and you, you won't find that you ha have the same data connection. You have to make sure that they look more or less the same otherwise you can have quite a lot of annoying experiences. So think about uh, that these user environments they follow, they're unique for each user machine combination. Also if you move between the lab computers you will have different um, connections there. The customization of the user interface, so which windows are placed where, which toolbars are open, that's also part of this user, so they follow the user. And finally, ArcMap has what's called extensions, so where one can extend the functionality of the program by activating different ex extensions. We will cover them when we start using them. So those are the global ones. Then we have the map document. That's where we've been working on to now. We, I've shown you the map document. I talked about it could be saved. You can save your, your map document as a MXD file. Um, there's only one layout, so there's only so you can say okay, one map document has a 10 by 10 centimeter output, and our map document could have a output for a, a one or a two page. So each map document will have one designed output layout. 
in the, that map document, when you save it, you also save information about marginalia and graphics, your geoprocessing environment, we'll talk about that later again, and what default geodatabase you're using. All of these things are part of the saving, and if you create a new map document, they will be back to default values. So they are what follows the map document. There is also one or more data frames. Um, I haven't mentioned data frames as yet, but this thing that's called layers up here, this is a data frame. In a moment we will start talking a bit more, but more about them. Note that a map document contains no data. It only contains references to data. So if you save your MXD file, email it to yourself, upload it to Dropbox, whatever you do, and then open it at home, if you don't have the same data connections, you'll get small red exclamation marks in front of your data, and you'll have to find the data somewhere else. Um, it can be done. It's not no. If you have access to the data, that's this bit annoying. Um, there is in ArcMap the possibility instead of just saying save your document, you can go in and do a uh, shares and then a map package. A map package is the map document packaged together with the data that is used in it. So if you're going to collaborate with someone that doesn't have the same data as you have and you want to make sure they got that data for the document, then you package it all into this map document, I'm sorry, map package. Um, it's not a good idea to take, and if you're using data from our file server, and then package that because they are typically very big data elements, so data for whole of Denmark or whole of Europe, things like that. They, it can be unpractical to um, package them together with the document. It's, then it's better to ensure that you have the same uh, data connections so that ArcMap can work in, an, in a sensible way. There are some tricks to make this easier that we will cover uh, in a later point. So, map documents don't contain any data, they are just reference to them. Inside the map documents is that there are data frames. The data frame contains information about how which layers we call, we remember we have our feature classes become layers when they are loaded. So here we have different layers. How they are displayed, which display order they have. We can put transparency on them, the symbology, classification, all these things are saved as part of the data frame. There can also be different projections and alternates. Those two, uh, when I was talking about the distinction between uh, data and environment on PowerPoint, those two maps were two different data frames. So data frame can also control scaling and projection. So let's um, look at a bit more of this. Um, I can do an insert and if I go and say insert data frame what happens is I now have a completely black screen because all my data is up in this data frame and that's not longer active. The active data frame is the one that's in bold. If I want to see my data again I have to click on them and go activate. And then I have back in my previous data frame. I can take my data and uh, copy it and paste it into my new created data frame. So now I have two data frames with the same data in it. But if I activate it, you can see that it has a different zoom. Okay. So I have uh, this one zoomed into Denmark and parts of Sweden, and this one up here zoomed into, let's say, Copenhagen. Uh, CPH Copenhagen, and uh, I'll call this one for Denmark. DK. So now I've got two different data frames, two different names. Yeah? If I go into layout view, however, 
I can see both of my data frames. So I have my Copenhagen data, uh, my Denmark data frame, and my Copenhagen data frame. Which one is which? Can you can see it by looking at which one is bolded? So this one is bolded at the moment, and if I click up in the other one, that one's bolded. So this is my Copenhagen. If I say okay, I want to make it a bit smaller, and I will zoom in on Copenhagen. Like that, and then I can take my Denmark data frame, drag it in, and zoom that so it uh, focuses on. Let's let's add it up. One. That's fine. And we'll take it. We'll have it there, and um, we can then rearrange our things and do different things. So. We can even make indicators of how they, how this one relates to that one. But again, we'll cover that when we talk about the sign. So, data frames, we can have many data frames. They can have different uh, projections. They can have different uh, scales. They can share data and they can have different data. So, those are the things that are primarily defined in the data frame. A data frame as opposed to the map document can't be saved. A data frame lives inside a map document um, and can only be saved together with its map document. You can however copy and paste data frames so I could choose this data frame and uh, copy it and then have uh, have it pasted into another uh, ArcMap project so I could move data in that way. So, but as such they only live inside the map document. The next layer down is the layer. So these are the individual layers and they contain information about symbology, which let data it is taken from how it's symbolized if it's going to be classified, how it's classified, and filters and transparency, and I think that's more or less some typical things that are on what we have as a data layer. So we have our categories, symbology, our labeling also, and filters. As opposed to the data frame, but like the map document, we can take, if we want always to have our forest displayed in a strange bluish color here. We can go up and then we can say save as layer file. So a layer can also be saved as a file on your hard drive, which is convenient if you want to make sure that in a series of maps you have the same layer displayed in the same way. So documents can be saved, data frames can't, layers can. Layers can no data, only reference to where the data is st for, stored. So only references to how it has been connected through those data connections. So basically that was it for today. Um, hope to see you soon. Bye.